my name is Ewan. I'm the Stringy Machine Technician for Gamma Sports, and I'm going to be doing another unboxing video for you all today. Uh, this time we're going to be unboxing the Gamma 6900 two-point stringing machine. So when you order this machine, uh, you're going to get these three boxes that you see here. Um, and you can order this exact machine off our website today for $24.99.99. So without further ado, why don't we start uh, by opening some of these boxes up. Let's start with the smallest one over here. This is the floor stand that comes with the 9900. So this one's going to be pretty simple. First thing you'll see is some instructions right at the top. You have some of the legs. Right there. And lastly here you have the actual stand itself. Okay, the next box here, the uh, next biggest one, this is going to be the two-point mounting assembly. So let's take a look at what's inside here. So let's remove the styrofoam. see in there, there's the two-point turntable. Let's go ahead and lift that out. And there's that. And then the clamps should also be in here. String clamps. As well as the screws for the turntable and the adjustment wrench for the base clamps. Finally, the last box here is going to contain the tensioner the actual machine base, and the rest of the tools and electronics that you need. So right up top here, have the AC adapter, some awls, and the, uh, the feet for the base um, if you choose to turn this into a tabletop machine. Have a gamma starting clamp, power cord, wrenches and cutters, or I'm sorry, pliers and cutters and the foot pedal. Okay. Lift the styrofoam out. And down here is the actual base of the machine. I've started to put the base together here, um, but I'm going to show how to attach the last leg here. So I've been using the hex wrenches that come with the machine, so you'll need two different sizes. And the screw that has the flat top goes up top, like so. And then the one that has the socket head fits underneath. There you go. So there's the floor stand. And just a quick note, you can see 
you can raise it here and it's got a little ratchet on the side here. You see how that works. You can also take that out so this will just slide freely. And in the lower position that'll keep it steady at whatever height you want it. Um, and then this is a safety screw. So this goes in on this side over here. And that's just to, just to give, since there's a lot of weight on the stand, that's just to give it a little bit extra strength to hold up the weight of the machine. So now after you've assembled your base, it's time to attach the base of the machine to the floor stand. So I've already done that partially for you guys, just as an example here. Um, so the floor stand comes with these three different packs of screws and the ones that you'll need for the 6900 are these largest set right here. These other sets are for a couple different other machines that use the same floor stand. So I do get asked about that frequently. Customers say, you know, why do I have these extra screws? Don't worry, you don't need them. You just need the one set of four for the 6 identified the proper screws that we need to attach the 6900 to the floor stand. And you'll come and you'll see the four corner holes at the top of the floor stand here. And you want to be careful to line them up properly with those holes so that you're not stripping the screw or the base of the machine when you're trying to attach these. It's best to leave all the screws loose until you've gotten them all threaded in snugly. So you can just get that attached there. And then once they're all in place and properly lined up, then you can go ahead and just tighten them down so that it's nice and firm there on the bottom. So if you don't want to use the floor stand on the 6900 and you just want to use it as a tabletop machine, there's a quick and easy conversion that you can do. So you're going to see these four screws on the base of the machine. And you can screw these rubber feet that come with the machine right into those screw sockets. So let me take this out. And then these will just screw in right in place right there. And these don't need to be super tight. They just need to be snug because you don't want to break the, the fiberglass on the bottom of the machine there. Now that we've shown you how to assemble pretty much the full machine, the last part is attaching your two-point turntable. So you'll just want to lay that down nice and carefully. And it's easiest to try to line the screws up before you place it down. So I've tried to do that here. Let's see how well I did. All right, so not quite. Let's try to get this even. There we go. So it says four screws to attach the turntable. And then you can release the brake lever on the front here and that gives you a full range of motion there with the turntable. So you get these four tooth stainless steel universal clamps and quick action lever locking base clamps, self-centering turntable, and of course the two point mounting system. Now there's a couple things I wanna go over here on the mounting system um, just cause there's a few there's a few potential issues that you could have with the two-point mounting system, so you want to be careful that you're using it properly. So why don't I go ahead and grab a racket from the wall behind me here. And I'll try to give you guys an idea of the best way to mount these frames. So of course you want to make sure that these white plastic pieces have the flat side 
pointing outwards so that they can hug the frame. Okay, and then these fit down right over top of that, like so. Now, when you're going to attach these plates right here, it's very important that you're not over tightening it. So you don't want to push this down on top of the frame and then go to squeeze this. Because what's going to happen is if it's too tight, you're either going to be damaging your frame up here, could crush the racket a little bit, or you could break the internal mechanism because of the amount of pressure that you're putting on that. So the best way to do it is to just leave a little bit of a space between this clamp and the top of the racket and then go ahead and clamp that down. And it's going to give you a nice snug fit, but you're not going to be damaging any of the internal parts. So do the same thing on that side. The frame over here is a little bit smaller. So there you have a nice snug fit. Another thing that can happen on a two-point turntable is because you don't have the four shoulder supports like you would on a six-point mount, the racket is more prone to warping. So it's really important to make sure that you don't have an over-tightened fit, but have a snug fit with these two towers pointing outwards to support the frame against that warping. So once you get the racket mounted here, you're going to want to start just giving the suspension mounting, or I'm sorry, the self-centering turntable, just adjust it just a little bit until, just to get it finger tight, and you don't want to over tighten that at all, but just get it finger tight until that doesn't really want to move too much anymore without putting too much pressure on that. That'll prevent the racket from warping too much this way as you're stringing the mains, and it'll prevent that kind of pancake shape to the racket when you're done. So those are just a, a couple quick tips for using a two-point mounting system. So as you can see, we're using the 6900 as a tabletop machine right now. Um, so one of the disadvantages of doing it that way is it makes it just a little bit harder to use the string length meter down here because it is right on the table like that. You can still use it. It's just not going to be quite as convenient as if you had those reels attached to your, your stringing machine stand and were just able to feed it easily into the string length meter. So it's still going to work for you as a tabletop machine, just might be a little bit more tedious. Um, so let's look at some of the features of the electronics box over here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this machine on. So you'll see the display light up here and start the countdown. Um, this is the 23 key electronics box for the rotational machines. You have the button to pull tension up here. Over here, um, you have a full keypad for adjusting tension or entering settings. Um, you also have tension, tension adjustments here and in point one increments here. Here you can change from pounds to kilograms. This button right here uh, changes the string length meter from measuring in feet or meters. You can also control the pre-stretch function on the machine down here by changing it from 10 to 20 percent. You also have that same feature on the knot button right here. You can increase the tension on your knot strings by 10 or 20 percent by pressing this button here. And then finally you can change the speed that the machine pulls the string with this button right here. So that's about all the features that are on here. Oh, you also have nine memory settings that are controlled with this button. Um, and then if you need to calibrate the machine, you can use this test button right here to put it into calibration mode. One thing that is very important to remember with the rotational machines is to remove this paper right here and then this screw from the side. So what will happen this, this screw is in place to protect the motor and the load cell inside the machine during shipping. So if you don't remove this screw and you try to go string a racket, you'll probably get an error code that says C04 on the machine. So if that happens, just know that you might have forgotten to take this screw out. And that's pretty easy to do. That comes out real easily. And once that screw is out, then you are all set to go ahead and string a racket on the 6900. Thank you for watching the unboxing video of the 6900 machine. Like I said earlier, you can buy this exact model off of our website today for $24.99.99. Um, again, my name is Ewan, and thank you so much for watching.